Hey guys, we are going to ride this high-level streetcar. We are so excited! Hey guys, we're back! We are entering the high level streetcar now. It looks awesome. Is this your first time, Joey? Yeah. How about your Rena? First, first time? <laughs> are you afraid of heights? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the High Bridge Streetcar. Operated by a 100% volunteer organization called the ERRS, Edmund Radial Railway Society. A group of volunteers that acquires, restores, maintains, and operates streetcars in Fort Edmund, where our main shop is, and up here at the High Level Bridge. This particular car you're riding is a 1912. St. Louis car that the city of Edmonton bought brand new, the same year the Titanic thing. It ran until 1951 when the whole streetcar system was abandoned. Was, this particular car was sold to a farmer, the body was, and we recovered it in the 1980s. It took us only uh, 17 years, 35,000 volunteer hours, and $150,000 to restore it. Now we're not running on the seat on the streetcar line, we're running on this old CPR line that went from downtown Strathcona to downtown Edmond. That building right there is a replica of the original train station. It was at the end of the line of the Calgary Edmond Railway, which arrived in Strathcona in, 19, in 1891. And it's about, about where the uh, washrooms are on White Avenue. On this side of the streetcar, is the oldest community gardens in Edmond, operating continuously since 1946. Originally called the Victory Garden. When the soldiers came back from Europe after the war, they saw how they gardened beside the railroad tracks. The city now owns the land, and the about 50 plots there. If you want one, you might put your grandchildren on the list. You might have a chance of getting one. Now, before 1891, all there was a this area was Fort Edmonton on the lawns of the legislature on the other side of the river. So if you wanted to go to Calgary to catch the France Round Hill Railway, you had to take the stagecoach to Calgary to catch it. You would leave the lawns of the legislature, go down to the river, kiss John Walters Ferry across the river, get off the stagecoach, and haul all your baggage, food and water for a week up the hill to a point directly ahead of me. Called Fort Hill Road or Road to the Fort. This is the original Calgary Edmund Trail. After you got up here with all your stuff, you threw it in the stagecoach and enjoyed your five day trip to Calgary, which cost 25 bucks a whole month's wage at that time. The things weren't all that bad. There was a store in Red Deer and there was a roadhouse in Wetaskiwin. The rest of the time you just slept on the ground. When the train arrived in 1891, it only cost $10 and it took 12 hours to get here. Things really improved. Just like today, it only takes about three and a half hours by car, 42 minutes on an airplane, plus two hours of security lineup. Directly ahead of us is CPR's only tunnel that they ever built in Alberta. It goes under the far end of it, 109th Street, the same street we're on top of when we're on the bridge. And on this end, they made it about three times its length because they owned the land and the air rights. They built an apartment block in the 60s. So we go underneath their parking lot for the apartment building called Strathcona House. As we enter the tunnel, we like to call it Edmonds Alternative Art Gallery, featuring local and contemporary artists.
last couple of years. So when the streetcars run on this bridge, they run on either side of the train tracks, which we're on. But you'll notice the poles that are holding up the 600 volt PC wire are offset from the edge of the bridge. That's because the streetcar hung over the edge of the bridge. So in grammar of the streetcar was way more fun. So John Walter, the guy staring you, just took across the river. His house is still in the trees down there, the yellow green one, it's a museum. It's the oldest house in Edmonton at its original location. John Walter was one of Alberta's first millionaires. The whole area was called Walterdale. He owned the ferry, he owned the coal mine, he owned the brickyard, he owned the lumberyard. <laughs> this whole area flooded in 1919 and most of his fortune went down the river. Now this bridge and the legislature building were both built at the same time. In 1911 through 1913. And Fort Edmonton, the Hudson Bay Fort, was still on the lawns of the legislature. We had brown building in that patch of grass, the building bridge. It was torn down for another five years after that. Now that we're over the water, we're about 150 feet, or about 47 meters above the water, which makes us the highest operating streetcar bridge in the world. The other car we met, in case anybody's interested, the 1947 Melbourne Australia car. It's a press car, in other words, it's not allowed to leave Australia because it's a historical item. They still run them there. It's an SW6. But the city of Melbourne, the city of Korea, donated to us because they said we'd take really good care of it and advertise for them. And I think they're selling off a bunch more right now and they're taking bins along with it. you got to have a reason why it leaves Australia. Our next stop is Brandon. Brandon. Catch the LRT. Anybody for Brandon? Yep. This ship is so cool because it's reversible seat. Like magic. Oh, the center of the car turns right around. Oh, right. We are higher than that train down below. And that's it, guys. I hope you tried this high level street car it's awesome and if you do like this video please give it a thumbs up and as always more videos to come